Hello and welcome to this first look exploring session looking at the sad one by Sir John Suckling. Um, and uh, yes, I, I don't know very much about Sir John Suckling, so I'm not going to say anything about it. We're going to find out. I think this is our first Sir John Suckling. I don't think we've done any suckling before, um, but uh, we have a dating range on this 1625 to 1637. So it's quite late in our dating uh, of, of plays that we've been doing of late. We've been we've been of recently we've been dancing around a little bit more um, when we got to the late Elizabeth and we got very I got very bogged down in going chronologically. And but now now that we're we've entered the Jacobean and the Caroline, we're sort of having a little dance, um, doing a little jig. Um, and so, yes, we're going to find out it's a single session. We're going to get to the end of the text um, and find out what it's doing and uh, uh, try and answer some of the more fundamental questions about this text uh, by the end. So reading today, Parmen uh, Parmenio, Bellamino, Boy, Second Actor and Lepido is... Hi, I'm Eric. I don't really remember all those parts, but, I, you know, we'll, we'll probably notice this the awkward silence when I get to it. Excellent. Reading Young Claremont, uh, Queen, Doco de Scopio, and first actor is... Liza Graham, in London, coming to a theatre near you sometime. Uh, reading Fidelio, uh, Francilia, and Multicani is... Desna from Lancaster. Hello. Uh, reading... Old Florelio and old... Actually, they're not labelled as old. I don't know why I'm, I'm emphasising the old here. The elder um, uh, uh, Claremont is... Hi, I'm Greg, and I'm from Stratford-on-Avon, so um, he who shall not be named shall be very difficult, potentially. <laughs> and reading Servant Keeper, uh, Young Florelio, Lords... Ah, it is, rather... <laughs> Uh, is Tom from Brighton. And joining us for the first time, be gentle people, uh, reading Lorenzo King, Drolio and Petruccio is... My name's Matthew Roberts, it's lovely to be here. And I'm your host, Robert Crichton. I will be reading stage directions and generally keeping us on the straight and narrow uh, or uh, going off on a tangent down a dark and worrying path uh, where uh, no one really knows the way out. Um, so uh, there's no prologue that I see here. We're skipping past uh, the various arguments and introductory uh, material to the reader because um, uh, that might give the game away too much. Act one, scene one, however, enter old Claremont. Actually, it was old uh, in prison. In his nightgown, his servant following him. Unheard! Unheard! Just heavens, it cannot be. Why, tyranny itself could do no more. The pale ghosts of Tiberius and Nero would blush to see an act so foul and horrid, so full of black ingratitude as this. Twas I that set the crown upon his head and bid him live king of his enemies, when he durst hardly hope it. Does he re does requite me? Now I see who do by the sorry who by the compass of his merit sails may guide his fraught of hopes in seasons fair and calm, but when storms come, all his good deeds with his good days must perish. Oh my unhappy star! He beats his breast. My lord, let not a fruitless passion make you die less a man than you have lived. Who art thou? I was lately won, my lord, of the vast crowd that waited on your fortunes, but am now become the whole train, lest the rest have left you. Prithee, do thou leave me too. Exit servant. The clap of the vulgar and loud popular applause are not the echo of our acts, but fortunes. Great men, but dials are, which, when the sun is gone or hides his face, are hardly looked upon. But yesterday I was time's minister. On me the whole court gazed, as at some comet set in Cassipia's chair, who but old Claremont could with nods create, and with a speaking eye command bare heads and knees. But now... Beats his breast again. 
Greatness is but the shadow of the beams of princes' favours, nourished in extremes, first taught to creep and feed on hopes, to lay upon the globes and humbly to observe each under minion till its own desire work itself near enough to set itself on fire. Studies a little. Fain I would make my audit up with heaven, for tis a large one, but the small, vain hopes which yet I have of life and of revenge, smoother these thoughts within, sorry, smother these thoughts within me faster than they are born. Enter Fidelio, disguised like a friar. Oh, ghostly father, my minutes are few, I see by this. Sir, you are welcome. I was but now considering how to die, and trust me, I do find it something hard. I shall extremely need some such good hope as yours to do it well. Faith, my lord, who binds to hold the way to die well is to live well first. But Dis they know. Discovers himself. Not too loud, there's danger in it. The king has promised life, but none, at yet, none as yet must know it. The enemies are too potent and must be softened by degrees. Why, then, I see he has not quite forgot past services. Not too much of that. This is not gratitude, or, if it be, it does as thankfulness in great ones used to do. It looks a squint, and seems to turn to favours, but regards new ends. Prithee, unriddle. Why, to be short, it is your daughter's beauty, not your merit. My fears prompt me too quick. She's not turned whore, is she? No. But her honesty is so straight beset that if she be not victualled well within and have some sudden suckers, she will, I fear, a long surrender. Oh, for Dania, when kings do tempt, there are need be angels that endure the shock, not women. It is true, my lord. Yet let not uncertain fears create new griefs. Doubt is of all the sharpest passion and often turns distempers to diseases. Collect yourself and be assured my zeal shall watch abroad and when I may reveal myself your servant, I'll not do it in breath, but with the adventure of my life or death. Oh, you are noble, sir. I know it and mean to hope the best. Farewell. Exuant. And I'll read the rest of the stage direction next time when we get uh, a little further on. So uh, we've sort of got uh, ex um, ex exposition despair. Uh, at play here. Um, I, I'm really interested in the stage directions. We've got these beating of breasts, studying a little. Um, uh, you know, just, we've got these these nice little uh, hints to the actor how far to to push this. Um, and yeah, it's it's it, it's set a scene. Um, of, uh, yeah, moves moves us in, in, in an interesting direction. Uh, I'm not sure about. Uh, Claremont's uh, uh, opinions about uh, the, what, what may or may not be going on with his daughter, um, but um, yeah, not, not always the, uh, the 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 yeah, a bit awkward there at times. Um, uh, thoughts from the room. I mean, it's quite effective in many ways. I know, I know what's going on. There's no doubt where we are. Um, Eric, uh, not Eric, Greg. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I felt like I sort of had been dropped into the middle of a play then. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it just felt a bit, yeah. It was a good speech, though. I liked it. It was a nice... Um, I, I don't have high hopes for him, though. <laughs> I get the feeling it's spot the stiff time. Well, it is allegedly a tragedy, so um, it may, may not go well for, for many people. Uh, other thoughts? Um did anyone else feel sort of discombobulated? I sort of designed to be a bit discombobulated. Uh, Liza. Well, I like that we're sort of plunged into a scene of very high emotion with someone about to die. It makes it makes a change from, you know, when the opening of a scene are two characters talking about something that they don't have a high stake in. She's like, no, I'm gonna die. Holy shit. And I and I and I like, you know, Fidelio is quite well drawn he's a servant he's fun servants are generally fun on stage but he also has this heart of loyalty which is quite lovely i think um unless he turns out to be the villain in which case not lovely but we'll see i guess um by the way apparently sir john suckling invented the game of cribbage if anyone likes playing cribbage um it's, yeah, it's it's it's, it's his Just, fault. He's to thank. 
Okay, uh, the, 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 I'm sure more information about this will, will come out when we do. He, he's right more plays, so the, 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 there will be lots of time for us to discuss that. Um, yeah, I do like Fidelia it, 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 turning up, and it's it's. I think that's element of Greg's uh, thing about feeling like he's jumped into the middle of a play when a friar comes on and then they pulls off the hood and it's Fidelio, and it's like who 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 now what? Um, the, there is something <laughs> sort of nicely absurd about it, which I quite enjoyed. Um, any other thoughts in the room before we go on and collect more data? Uh, Eric? Well, what I was thinking is it's a bit like the beginning of Periander where you're, you're literally dropped in the middle of a crisis and you don't know what is going on. And that, but then you kind of, uh, uh, yeah, I, I still, we don't know why he's in prison or, um, what has happened. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm trying to work out what's going on. Yes. Did, did they state why the king put him there beyond just 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 reasons? I mean, unlike Periander, the, 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 uh, a play we've uh, uh, did a while ago, uh, people do use each other's names. So at least we have some idea who they are. Whereas in that text, people walked on stage and you're just expected to know who they are and why they're doing random murdery things. Um, whereas here, the, the, there is some attempt to explicate what's going on, even if they're not necessarily giving you all the data. Any other thoughts? Otherwise, we will we will move forward and find out more. OK, so the scene ends with a stage direction going into the next scene. Enter Lorenzo and his father with servants whispering together and frowning. They pass over the stage and exuant. Act one, scene two. Enter Lorenzo now solo uh, as going to prison. Armed with a love of sovereignty and revenge, I'll ravish fortune and all engines try that heaven or hell yet have yet discovered. But I will scale my end and plant desire as high as any thought durst e'er aspire. The dotage of the king shall not secure thee, poor old man. Claremont, I come. This night our quarrel ends. Nothing but death will ever make us friends. Knocks at the prison door. Enter the keeper. Where's old Claremont? In bed, me lord. Prince Grave, that would have said. Must he be then die tonight? The king will have it so. He fears the people love him, and to save his life may prove tumultuous. Oh, poor gentleman. How quick is fate come on him? How sudden is all woe? Bad days of wings and good on crutches go. My lord, will please you walk into that private chamber. The executioner shall straight be there. Lorenzo goes forth, murders him within, enters again. You must be sure to keep secret now. Perchance the king to try your honesty and blind his daughter's eyes will send to ask of welfare. Oh, my lord. Hey, I knew you understand. Farewell. Turns back again. One thing I had forgot. If any ask what groan that was, say it is an unusual thing against great men's deaths to hear a noise at midnight. So now, royal lecturer, set you safe. Tis your death must secure my life, all and on. Danger is but a bug word. A barrage shall through did mountains of black horrors me surround. When fortune's hang in doubt, bravely to dare it bravely to get out. And uh, so that's that's act one. Uh, there, that was that was the, the we have now finished Act One. It is not a long play. Um, <laughs> Lorenzo goes forth, murders him within, enters again. Um, it's 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 um. I mean, uh, 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 Greg, I think you said uh, you didn't think Claremont had long. Um, you were right. Uh, I did. I did. You think it was going to be that quick? <laughs> Um, no, and I kind of feel cheated of his death. <laughs> you know, come on, where's the great long, oh, I'm dying, oh, why forgive me, or where's the, you know, anything but being killed off off stage. I mean... Yeah, especially when Fidelio turned up and said, you know, oh, things, things, stuff, um, and, and, it, it's it's like and it, you you were set up with all this emotive stuff you you could you could have done a you, you could clearly have done a, a, a an amazing death scene uh there 
Um, Obviously, the actor was needed elsewhere. Yeah, um, <laughs> he was. He was popping down the road for another play. <laughs> well, it, don't know how the extreme the doubling is. I mean, it it appears that it's structured to have breaks between acts because in the next act, Lorenzo is about to walk straight back on again. So, uh, it seems structured that way. Um, interesting. Interesting. Any 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 thoughts? Other thoughts, Eric, and then uh, Desna. Yeah, it does have a bit of Promos and Cassandra vibes, which is kind of like you've got this character in prison who is kind of um, his he is related to someone who is an object of desire uh, by a person in power, um, and then he gets murdered. But then, um, yeah, I don't know. It feels like murders him within might be a staged direction of saying, you know murders the person who is inside but not necessarily Cl Claremont himself I don't know maybe that's just me <laughs> hoping that Claremont doesn't actually die yeah who who is that him is it is it Claremont I suspect it is uh Claremont uh I suspect this is 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 done is done but who knows Desna yeah I'll just um, I mean kind of repeating something that people said for the earlier bit but I really really appreciate the pace it's good it's moving and it's <laughs> but you're not losing any sense of what the story is at the same time. So mm. I quite like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I like Lorenzo's little the, the stopping, turning back again. Just one more thing. Um, uh, if anyone asks what groan that was, say it is a, a usual thing against great men's death to hear a noise at midnight. It's just like you know, <laughs> murdering people's, you know, noisy. Um, <laughs> people don't appreciate that that the person being murdered may make some noise um, or is that that there's some portent that's supposed to be made at this time because a great person's died so maybe there's supposed to be fireworks or fun thunder in the sky or something at that moment uh, Liza muted at present well I think we'll see what Lorenzo is about is setting up there but uh, you know it kind of blows my mind that we have Claremont, who was set up as a character with a history, with a relationship with his servant. And, and Fidelio is like being like, don't worry, master, I'll get you out of here. And like him actually being murdered was the last place I expected that to go. <laughs> um, because, you know, we had, we, had, we had not only a character set up, but a relationship and the amount of effort the author had put into that seemed like too much, uh, too much effort for it to, to be immediately thrown away. It's a bit George R. R. Martin. Mm. Oh, this proto Game of Thrones uh, uh, vibes. Okay, I, I can go with that. Um, I assume that the next scene, everyone will be naked and uh, and doing more exposition. Uh, I suspect that's how it works, isn't it? I, I, um, <laughs> I, I, I've seen five minutes of the series. That, that, that's 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 pretty much all I got. That's uh, all okay. you need. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh let's let's dive into act two and find out what what what's what's going on there then so act two scene one enter lorenzo and uh parmenio uh, attending or leave the chamber if any come i'm busy parmenio be nigher nigher yet what dares thou do to make thy master king thyself a favorite uh, there's something blunt my lord studies why i dare do that which I dare not speak. By all my hopes spoke like the man I want. T'would be lost time to use such circumstance to thee. Shall we this night dispatch the king? This minute were he my father, he's not the first, nor shall he be the last. Soul of my soul, my better angel sure, for saw my wants and send thee hither. Hominio, there's none but he stands twixt a crown and me. The cloud that interposes betwixt my hopes before is like a vapour, fallen and seen no more. The house of Claremont is lost. The king hath sent one son to banishment, and I have sent the father. How, sir, you have not murdered him? Starts. Why? Nothing, my lord. Uh, only I'm sorry I had no hand in it. Step, the villain hath killed him. Oh, thou art jealous. Thy hand comes well enough. This night I have determined that soon ere the royal blood's a tilt, you shall to horse. Tis easy to outride. Imagination itself, my lord. For then report will say thou killed him, no matter. Oh, oh none at all, my lord. 
when I am king, I can restore ease. True, my lord. What if your excellence cast out when I'm gone that Clarence's youngest son did this and took his flight upon it? His discontents known well enough to make the suspicion the most received truth. Besides, wheresoever I go, I'll swear to was he. By Jove, most rare, when I am king, I shall be poorer than I am by giving thee thy due. Away! Let's lose no time in words. We're both resolved to put this cause to swords. I'll to the king, thou to prepare for night. Four hours hence. Wait me in the gallery. And they exit. Okay, I wasn't going to pause as early as that. Um, but there's 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 a wider mission for Lorenzo here, which is um, he's going to take on the, the 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 kingdom. I mean, that's that's whoa. I mean, this is escalating really quick. <laughs> You barely meet a character, and they're already they're already working their way through the entire royal court. Um, I don't know how much to add to that. Anyone got any thoughts? Otherwise, we'll read on. <laughs> Eric. Well, it's a bit like Hoffman, which we did this afternoon, um, which is kind of basically murder, murder, murder. Um, except this is much more driven by ambition, uh, which is. I mean, we, we've seen plays like this, which starts off with like sort of, I will murder the king, and that's not, totally not going to cause any problems. Um, yeah. Hmm. yeah, it's, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's just, it's like, I don't really know who Lorenzo is. I mean, this is the thing. We've killed the only character that we've had any proper sort of <laughs> sense of a relationship with. Whereas Lorenzo, Lorenzo isn't even really talking to us. It's not like he's done an aside to talk about his 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 intent. He's talking to someone else on stage. Um, so, and I don't, I I just don't know who. Where does he fit in court? What's his expectations here? Well, why why is he doing these things, um, Eric? Clearly, he's in the Spanish tragedy, but of his own making. <laughs> uh okay well um I paused a little earlier than planned. Uh, let's let's. Uh, uh rattle on and see what else uh, we get uh so let's go to act two scene two and enter young clarimont solus break heart and burst my father murdered and in the midst of all his hopes of life me think me thinks i see millions of furies stand ready to catch my rage's sacrifice Oh, for a man that could invent more plagues than hell could hold. I have conceived of wrong and am grown great already. Oh, sweet revenge, I humbly thee entreat. Be my grief's midwife. Let the mother die so thou bringst forth her longed-for progeny. Methinks I feel the villain grow within me and spread through all my veins. How could I murder now? Poison, stab. My head is full of mischief. Sulfur and flaming pitch shall be but mercy to those deaths I'll give. And exit <laughs> the terribly happy uh, young uh, Claremont. Uh, act two, scene three. Enter the king with Fidelio. Though it be not safe for subjects to pry into the secrets of their prince, much less to question about them, yet the implicit faith of blind obedience poisoned with pleasing oft, and it like the majesty. Why do you court this lady thus? Why dost thou ask? I know tis insolence to make reply, yet hear me as the echo of the court breaks sir. They call your last given mercy and those favours but fairer ends to lust. The zeal hath gotten thy pardon. And stares upon him. No more. He that doth offer to give direction to his prince is full of pride, not of discretion. Exit the king. So, to give kings good advice may show, I see, men faithful but not wise. I'm honest yet, and I do fare the worst for it. Oh, the court! Their humours reign, and merits only serve to mock with idle hopes those best deserve. Exit for Delio. Act two, scene four. Enter Francilia and Bellamino. Sir, leave your compliments. Methinks the sweetest speech is that that's meant. Wrong not, my love, best creature. So to think my words are not the true ambassadors of my heart. Why, thy fair self, I swear, nature has been too partial in robbing heaven and earth to give you all. Their weaknesses, you mean? 
and I confess, my lord. Their richest graces, sweetest. Oh, do not rack me thus, I love. Can you give me love again? Yes, any love that you dare ask or I dare give, my lord. But, fair lady, love must have no bounds. It pines in prison. Oh, but, my lord, hot loves, if not contained like fiery meteors, promise no good to others than are themselves consumed. Uh, enter the king and lords attending. Oh, leave me not in doubt, distracting trance. How, oh, my boy? What, Corsin? Uh, no, sir. What was he doing then, Francilia? So please, your grace, he was in the midst of all your praises when your highness entered. <laughs> There's some hope yet, then. Oh, you are glad we are come, then. That discourse was tedious. No, my lord. I should have been well pleased to have heard him longer. You are grown a courtier, fair one. Celia, with a court, she's ready. Yes. Okay, oh, yes, yes, and yes, uh, uh, please, your majesty. Come, we'll abroad then. This day invites us forth. Where's our queen? And they exit. Act two, scene five. Enter young Clarimon, Fidelio, and young Florilio. Then, with a pause filled up with sighs, ask him how strong his guards are. But above all, be sure to imply inflaming corrosives. Screw up his anger to the height and make his fears be double. Officious friends in mediation may else prove remedies. Enough. If we do fail to act our parts to the life in tragedy, may all those horrors that do threaten him fall upon us. Farewell. Exuant Fidelio and young Florelio. So, my revenge flies high. The villain first shall kill his father, and while his hands are hot in the blood, this sword shall pierce him. Murdered, he shall sink quick to hell. I will not give him leave to unload himself of one poor single sin of thought. But lest he should wake out of his great security and shun his fate, I will rock him on. Mischiefs are like the cockatrice's eye. If they see first, they kill. If seen, they die. Exit young Claremont. Uh, so, um, there's a lot happening really fast. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's sort of reminding me of, of a treatment for a film than 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 a, a fully fledged script. We've had this before with the, the, the Fair Maid of Bristow, where it's like all the plot beats are there, but none of the infill um, has been put in to sort of flesh it out. So you know what this scene is doing. I love the scene of Fidelio where, you know, a cat may look on a king, but Fidelio patently isn't allowed to. Um, <laughs> that stage direction stares upon him and the king's going, no, 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 no staring. Don't stare at me. <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> it's just, it's like, I say, there's an idea here. I, I, I love Claremont's just coming in and just going, death, kill destroy um it's just and, and there's plotting and there's this this the shape of all of these relationships are there but it's it's just like the moment you start getting into it they've gone hang on somebody else has come on now <laughs> um other thoughts i mean what's young claremont's actual plan here what is he actually planning to do in that last scene because I, I know he's planning to do something but i'm slightly confused there's a lot of him and his. Who's he? Who's he planning to kill? And how's he planning? How, how's that working? I I'm guessing. I don't know. Is he is he, is the first? Is he trying to make young Florelio angry at the king so Florelio will kill him, or does he know it was does he know it was Lorenzo that killed his father, or does he think it was the king? Who knows? Yeah, because I was assuming that Lorenzo has has leaked the murder to make it him, the young Claremont, to go and kill the king. And that's the cunning plan that, that Lorenzo may have set up. But I don't think the play tells us that. And I don't know if that is actually what's going to happen. Um, hmm. I mean, I'm enjoying it <laughs> in a weird way. I mean, it's, it's not a flow. There's some of the dialogues, it's all a bit extra, but um, it's um, it's fun. Um, we're here for extra, it has to be said. Uh, Eric. I just like how um, 
that quick turn by Bellamino. It's like, oh, leave me not in doubt, in doubts and destructing trance. And then, you know, the king comes up and goes, how, my boy, what courting? And then he's like, no, me, no, I, I, I don't know what courting is. I've never heard the word. <laughs> Nothing to, nothing to see here. No, no, it's all fine. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, stuff's happening. Stuff nothing at a pace, um, uh, and which, you know, as a, as a sexually, essentially a one actor as it currently stands. Um, I mean, it's got five acts, but it's, it's not very long. Um, yeah, I suppose it has to move at pace, doesn't it? Um, okay, should we dive into Act 3? Any other thoughts in the room? Um, this rate, they're going to be done far earlier than expected. <laughs> uh, okay, Act 3, Seed 1. Enter the King, young Florilio and Fidelio. And must the villain kill me too? This very night. Well, it is not possible. Why would he have had more? He had my heart. And might he had all but the name of king? Oh, heaven had tied so strict a friendship. We could not part with it. I durst have thought that I have merited fidelity from him. Oh, my lord, like ne'er so many drops, sweet as the morning dew fall on the sea, the brinish water turns them all to salt. Where there's an ocean of ingratitude, favours must needs be lost. Thou speakest but true. Who does it merit trust? but writes an obligation in the dust your counsels now my faithful life preserve. Is there a way for pardon? The faith, sir, it would pollute mercy to use it here. The fact's so foul it calls itself a death. And it shall have it. Traces enough. But when ungrateful comes, it stops the mouth of pity. Go, take our guards and appre apprehend him straight. No, soft, great sir. T to fit your justice, consider the way it's made. If you shall apprehend him for treason unborn, and which he only did intend, foolish report which never t'was the right may clear his guiltlessness and sense your majesty. If you'd permit him to approach the chamber, Yet who'd advise treason should come so near? You would then, you would take him in the act and leave no place for foul suspicion. Then if your grace sent for his father and kept him with the pretense of business by you till he became the witness of the attempt, envy itself could have no cause to bark. Thou art my oracle. I cannot tell whether my debt be greater to thy faith or to thy counsel. Go and watch abroad, and let these cares wait upon fate and me. The captain of the guard, twere fit you sounded. He may do mischief, Lorelio. You shelter his father. The rest is mine to manage. Exuant young Florelio and Fidelio. These men are honest and must be rewarded. They do deserve it. Tis most rare to find a greatness that enjoys true friends, for commonly it makes us feared and hated. The one doth breed offence, to the other leaves naked. Let the impartial eye but look upon all we call ours, and then again behold the many hungry eyes of expectation that wait upon our bounty, and it shall find that we have scared enough to keep men's hopes up. We are rich if we can purchase friends, thrones, though they advance their glory ne'er so high, but are the seats of fear and misery. Exit the king. Okay, so the people who were plotting with long, <coughs> young Claremont, is this a setup within a setup, or are they genuinely dobbing him into the king? The way they were sort of describing this of the the who the what now um it, yeah are they are they actually just reporting him to the king or is this part of the setup so that the king trusts them to help set up the thing uh tom well i think it's um again it's a classic 
it's a first reading on on further reading you could you could um put such um such menace and such depth to the text that it doesn't really matter it it just it goes along at a pace and and it's quite rich in 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 effect I think with this scene, the problem is there's an awful lot of hymns and, 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 and going on, and I'm not sure who the hymns are a lot of the time. I think once we know what the plot is, we can add a few names in there. Um, there's still some explication that needs to be done here. Um, it, it's fine for there to be an ambiguity whether the young Florelio and Fidelio are actually telling the king of the plot or if the telling the king of the plot is part of the plot because young, Cla young Claremont wasn't very clear himself um who are they setting up here who who are the murderers of whom and things so it's slightly confusing because of course we've got various different generations going on here so when we're talking about fathers and sons which set of fathers and sons are we talking about um so yeah that said i do like the turn of phrase there's some nice lines in here there's some some quite sayable lines i i and for all I said earlier on, the explication was working quite well. This is where it started to fall down a bit. Um, I will rock him on. Um, <laughs> from the previous scene. From the previous act. Um, uh, it sort of lands in a, probably a different way than intended, but I do quite like it. <laughs> so he's got a turn of phrase, and he can obviously plot it out. I've just... Uh, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, any other thoughts in the room? Uh, they leave me dangling to, to say more words to fill in. Uh, Eric? We're already in Act 3. I mean, this is insane. Just <laughs> sort of trying to work out already who's with who and who's on whose side. I, I feel like I need, um, what do you call it, like a chessboard where you've got like the colored pieces and stuff. Except, yeah, using that might sort of lead the game of chess references which is complicated enough anyway um yeah um yeah i don't know this is just interesting very interesting okay let's go into act three scene two then um here's some people who might do some explication enter parmenio and lorenzo boo hiss <laughs> In deep security, my lord, the ladies at one window courted, the king with Florelio and the favorite, contriving of a mask which he must never see. Good, which he must never see. Oh, thou dost hug my face. How I am ravished to think upon ensuring joys. Parmenio, he's dead already. Six hours ago, my lord, you cannot think how much ado I had to keep myself from saying, and to show for these, your majesty, the open presence to you. That methinks one while I see your highness sit like Jupiter in state with all the petty gods about you, and then again in a more tempting shape than was the shower of gold lie in some Danae's lap, more wanton than Europa's bull. Another time with some great train, as if you went to battle rocked in a downy coach, go take the air and the thronging city crowded into a handful, looking along to bless your eyes and striving to who shall cry loudest, God bless your majesty. And all the while thou, like my Ganymede, shalt taste ambrosia with me. While the petty gods burst with repining at thy happiness, thou shalt dispose of all, create, displace, be called my boy, revel and mask, what not? Oh, for one half year I will not speak upon to the people. Take you that office. Keep that part for yours. Oh, how I long for night. Thou canst not name the pleasure could make the time so tedious. Upon away unto thy watch, and when the king's abed, be here. I shall, my lord, and to a please your majesty, I shall. And <laughs> you won't. <laughs> Okay, so Parmenio is really getting into the whole. Oh, I can't wait to see you on a throne, um, <laughs> and the the Ganymede reference is is creating a whole relationship here that is uh, is interesting. Um, so yes, um, again, murder plotting, wheels within wheels, 
not quite sure how all the wheels fit together, but there's definitely wheels and, and an expectation. Um, so, yeah. Um, other thoughts in the room? Um, Eric? I, I got lost during that speech the six hours ago, my lord. Like, sort of... Um, yeah. I'm 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 a bit lost. Like I I get that he was making a parallel between like Lorenzo and Jupiter and stuff, but then the sort of rocked in a downy coach go take the air and have the throng city crowded into handful and all that bit was kind of a bit like excessive. I feel I don't know. Well, I mean, yeah, he's sort of projecting to some sort of uh, coronation, but he's also talking about a mask earlier. So maybe oh, that yeah. this is a component of the mask, as it is a, maybe a component of the plan. Uh, it's not unusual for tragedies or uh, to to involve, you know, masks as an, a pretext or some point kind of performance to it as a pretext for murder. Uh, I don't know whether that's what they're doing there, uh, Liza. Uh, yeah, what I think he's doing is just painting him pictures, um, you know, saying, oh, you're the king already, um, you know, all you need is this one little murder. And then um, he's sort of glossing over the murder part and just saying, well, I, I nearly called you your majesty just now because it's like you're king already. And and then he has this whole metaphor of him being, um, as, you, as you were saying earlier, he has this whole metaphor of Lorenzo being like Jupiter, uh, and he's in state, and then he's like sexy Jupiter because uh, it's seducing like Danai and Europa, and and then he's like battle Jupiter going um, and, and and like imagining all the people cry, crying God save your Majesty. So th this is like immensely flattering images, and it's very interesting that yeah, Lorenzo then takes up the Jupiter metaphor and goes, well, if I'm Jupiter, who's going to be Ganymede? I guess it's you. So Yeah, especially and especially with the next line, shalt taste ambrosia with me, has a has a whole level of meaning that is uh, well, it's really a matter of how the Jupiter. performers play it. Ganymede was Jupiter's cupbearer. It mm, could just yes. mean he's going to bring him a drink. Yes, <laughs> yes, I'm sure. But then we have the shower of gold. I mean, stop <laughs> already. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I was going to say, we've had Ganymede in one of the Lily plays, but anyway, that's just, yeah. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's in uh, Dido, Ganymede. isn't it? Um, Probably, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, uh, there might be in another as well, I forget. Um, yes, uh, Ganymede is mentioned in, uh, no, th there's, yeah, Ganymede is mentioned in Dido and then in Women Beware Women in the mask. Mm. Various people play Ganymede and Hebe fighting over who gets to I was going to say, isn't there a shower of gold in Women Beware Women too? Oh yeah, a shower of molten gold that kills someone, yeah. Livia Spoil does spoilers it Spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen it. Uh... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, tune in next season. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, um, we, we've got some imagery, uh, which we can scroll out of our brains if we desire. Uh, we will go on to Act 3, Scene 3. Enter the Queen Amazia, uh, Bellamino, her favourite drollio and attendants. What is the matter, madam, that the court is in such clouds tonight? The king feigns mirth and freedoms, but with all the flashes of fury, make it escapes. Um, tis strange, my lord, you should not know. Faith, madam, I know nothing. Aye, but I suspect. The clock no sooner struck, but all the statesmen started, as if they'd been to run a race. And the king told me, twere fit I took my rest. There's something in it. But these designs of state we women know no more than our own fate. To turn our talk, faith, my lord, where lies that beauty that so captivates you all? She has a graceful garb, tis true. Uh, who, madam? Francilia? Oh, she has a dainty foot and daintier hand, an eye round as a globe and black as jet, so full of majesty and life that when it most denies, it most invites. <laughs> These parts she has indeed, but is here all? All? Heaven forbid her hair is so preciously fair and soft that she, were she fallen into some river and in danger, one would make a conscience to save her life for fear of spoiling it. 
Her her lips are gently swelled like unto some blushing cherry that hath newly tasted the dew from heaven in her cheeks. Hold, hold, my lord, all this is poetry. A painter could not flatter more. To my eye now, she is so slender. She is scarce, I think, a span about the middle. Oh, madam, you must think wise nature of such rich mold as she was framed would make as little waste as could be. So, so, what think of you, the, the upper part of the nose, then? Does it not look as if it did give way, the eyes should shortly have an interview? You're too severe a critic, madam, so good a wit as yours could make, when where there were any old blessed perfections. After all, next to your highness, I'm resolved to think she's chiefest beauty. Yeah, not next to me, my lord, I, no, I'm sure you flatter, but tis too late to chide you for it. Good night. And the exit. Uh, that was a very important scene introducing very important themes, I'm sure, for later on. Um, <coughs> diverting and interesting in places, but um, uh, her, her lips are gently swelled like unto some blushing cherry. Uh, I believe that's, uh, that's the standard Instagram pose, isn't it? Um, <laughs> there, isn't it? Sort of, mm. So, uh, yeah, so I ca I'm calling that the blushing cherry uh, from, from now on. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's, it, it, it's, it's saying something, it's interesting because there's, there's been this sort of hint of the, 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 well, I say love interests, uh, uh, there's a question of agency with a lot of these love interests here, um, that have been set up earlier when the Claremont senior was talking about his daughter and their position within the court. And there's sort of a hint of this sort of playing on in the back, but there's nothing directly has happened with any of that plot yet um and again we have this sort of scene that feels like it's setting up something but i don't know whether we're going to get payoff on that or whether it's 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 just a, a the idea of an interesting scene that goes within the flow of some stuff it, it it's it, it's unclear what this scene is precisely doing within the schema of the rest of the plagues we don't really get we really haven't had that much about france celia yet have we um we've had a bit of a bit of a reference earlier a very short scene where someone wasn't wooing them um absolutely wasn't no sense of the king's relationship there the queen's relationship here but it's it's all a bit tenuous i can't sort of grab hold of it um but it's again perfectly structured scene in its own mini sense um eric uh, I think Desna had something to say first. Oh, um, no. Oh, uh, okay. Um, well, it's interesting because, like, we've seen that the king is interested in uh, Francilia. So it's kind of, uh, there's a problem going, is he going to try and get rid of the queen? Is this a thing? Or is, she, is he just going to have, like, Francilia as a mistress? Um, mm. And... Yeah, just the way Bellamino goes, oh, yeah, she's so beautiful. She's like, if heaven walked on earth kind of thing. But not next to you, of course. Uh, <laughs> it's just, yes, I, I like how he... it back he, at the last minute there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like yeah. It just, uh, just went a bit too far. Just a little bit. Hmm. Um, but the Queen is actually takes it in fairly good nature. It's like, yeah, this this is the, the, what these, these young 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 types are like you know and you flatter me and you know i think the queen knows knows where she's at actually and she's quite well drawn and sense i've got a sense of who she is uh liza did you yeah i i like her um i mean bellamino is is introduced in the stage directions as her favorite mm. and i think uh that uh, you know it's it's significant that she ends the scene by saying good night to him and leaving after he's praised this other beauty so highly. Um, mm. I, 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 if I were directing this, I might have at the beginning of the scene, I might, I might have them, you know, heading to somewhere intimate and by the end of the scene it'd be nope. <laughs> mm. I do like the, it, but it's too late to chide you for it. It's like, I, I, I can't be bothered. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're saying playful about it i quite like um okay let's see where uh we're still in act three act three seems to have gone on longer than the other acts so uh but i it could be an illusion 
uh, Act 3, Scene 4. The Enter the King, Going to Bed. Cleonax, Lord's Attendance. Good night to all. Lord Cleonax, a word in private. They whisper. Take away the light and shut the door. Exuant King and Cleonax. Enter Parmenio and Lorenzo. King gone to bed. An hour ago, my lord. What if he should not be asleep yet? No matter ere his tongue did speak, our sh swords shall kill. What though he goes traitors, twill be his last, and may be pardoned. Come, sir, bravely on, fears worse than death. Your lord of all, or not of your own breath. Nay, if I fear, may I not live. Follow. The king calls out treason, old Cleonax, rising to go out at the door to call for help, is met by his son, who took him for the king and killed him. Lorenzo is presently of set purpose run through by Parmenio. I'll just pause there. There's a lot happening there. So, Cleonax, of course, we all know who he is. Um, that's, <laughs> um, I mean, it's a brand of tissue, isn't it? Um, and... Uh, so there's a Cleonax senior and a Cleonax junior, according to the uh, the the drowned Mattis personae. And clearly, they are, are they the people they were all talking about earlier about the father and son team here that we had about being killed. Is is, is that what is that? What, so is this what was? But now Lorenzo's also dead, uh, of set purpose, run through. So Parmenio always planned to kill him. Well, wait, is Lorenzo dead or is he just like stabbed a bit? Oh, oh, is it? Oh, is it the, the, the oh, yes, he's uh, set purpose run through. So, yes, yeah, so he's it's oh, oh, me. Oh, look, I'm, I'm bleeding. Ooh, like, ooh. can he still talk? Will he get yeah. a death scene where he's like, yes, I wanted to kill everyone? <laughs> yeah. Um, or is it is it a faint? Is is he is he actually deaded? Um, mm. uh, you know. <laughs> The run through does sound pretty bad, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely a trip just to Just a flesh wound, yeah. you know. It's just a flesh wound. It's fine. Greg? I, I was going to say, people people don't survive very long in this play, and they seem to die a lot quicker than I expected them to. Because if Lorenzo's dead, it just feels like you sort of... Every time you sort of get used to a character or like a character, it's like Game of Thrones. You don't. As soon as you get to like somebody, they die. I, even, <laughs> you've never met them before; they die. I mean, Cleonax yeah. and his son—they haven't even had a line of dialogue. All they've had, they, they are an are a low-paid extra. Uh, that's what they are. They only get they they do some whisper acting um, but, uh, upstage, but you but know is, they're not even Cleonax, they're not even is, fully in the cast. Is Cleonax <laughs> not Lorenzo's father? I I don't know. I don't I think, think so. I think I think Cleonax is Lorenzo's dad, and I think this is what young Claremont was talking about in his uh, vengeance speech. I, I think he's arranged for Lorenzo to kill his own father, and then Lorenzo's servant to kill him, presumably. Uh, Desna, <laughs> you're, you're muted. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm just going back up to the list at the top and. Father to Lorenzo is a separate line from Cleonax yeah. Senior. Treasure yeah, I'm just King. I'm going through a different list. Hang on, I'm just just checking. Oh, um, so how many lists? Uh, I have a separate list. Uh, no, you're right. You are absolutely right. So Lorenzo is Cleonax's son. You uh, li Liza. Oh, right. right. So there's a there's a there is a slight confusion there. Um, so, okay, it would have been helped if someone mentioned the name Cleonax at some point prior to this, <laughs> and identified him as as the father of Lorenzo, because it's not not very helpful there. Uh, Tom, I, I I'm getting a sense that it's not Game of Thrones, but it's it's, it's, it's strangely drawn like like Twin Peaks, and you have all of these very strange characters. Who have their entrances and their exits, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I like I like the I like I like the strange caricature that it, you could you could get in it. 
uh okay right um well I'm, I'm waiting for someone to talk backwards um any any moment now um can i just throw one thing in who is the sad one well i think they're all pretty sad at the moment <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just like you know you sort of think this, by this point in the play, I would have expected somebody. You yes, I agree, Rob. They are all sad, but I've expected somebody to come forward as the main candidate for that title. <laughs> at, at the moment, I think that the one who's most sad was Eld, the elder Clarimon, because he was really sad at the beginning, but yeah. then he died, so uh, <laughs> he passed the baton on to his son. His son is also quite sad, so I'm I'm going to go with the the Clarimon dis- dynasty. I, I, I'm, I'm sh- maybe the text will tell us more later on. We're still in Act Three. Uh, it's been high hive of emotion and activity. Act Three, Scene Five. Enter the king in his nightgown, as well as lords and attendants. Trust me, most sad and strange. A flood of grief beats my eyes for vent. Poor Cleonax, I'm truly sorry for thee. Oh, so we are. We are. So- oh, we are. This accident commands our pity, but what is done is done. Let it not be as yet divulged. Remove the corpse and let it be the care of thee, Florelio, to see his burial honourable and private. Good thanks to all the rest. Claremont, stay you with me. Exuant the lords, etc. Traitors dead by Parmenio, but you must know there's one yet lives within me. I love Clarimont. Uh, that passion of all others, sir, heaven easiest pardons. He lives not, sure that loves not. Aye, but my love's not pure. Tis great, not good, Clarimont. I love Francilia. Take heed of unchaste fires, great sir. They, they mischief, sir. Forget her. Faith, forget her. Such fits as these are ever cured like agues, best when they are most starved. If you shall give them their desired fuel, they'll not be quenched with ease. As it is, and it is ever seen, heaven keep my sovereign. The house they're bred in feels them first and ever. Paramount, thou wert never in love. Thou art philosophical, and would have reason guide where it was never yet a company. Companion, even. Thou showest thy want of love, but helps not mine. Counsel is now too late. It's like Smith's water flung upon the coals, which more inflames. Here, thou twice hast saved my life. If thou now speedest, go to Francilia and present this jewel to her, and with all my love. Gives him a jewel. Do it with thy best of language and respect. For means at first we'll use, but foul shall come. And if she the fair refuse, good night and good success. Obedience is the best of what I am. Your will's my law, sir. Exit the king. Why then it must be. Was there no woman in the court to feed thy lust with but my sister? And none to be the board but I? Could thou not think of any other way to express thy greatness but by doing me wrong? My father's angry ghost, I see, is not full appeased yet. Studies. Why should I make of murder thus begun? Um, why should I make of murder thus begun a massacre? He did my father right in his revenge. I but he wronged him first. And yet who knows, but it was justice to attempt by force. The removal of great favorites, though enemies to the state is not so warrantable. Ah, I'm in a maze. Something I'll do, but what I cannot tell. I fear the, the worst. Lust never ended well. Exit young Claremont. I've um... got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm I'm definitely feeling he might be the sad one. Um, I'm definitely getting feeling. So, okay, so, so Lorenzo murdered his father because he wanted to murder lots of people, including the king. 
young Claremont found out about this somehow, which isn't very clear, and so was instrumental in making sure that that uh, Lorenzo is killed and the king knows all about it and he gets into favour with the king and that's all good and now we're into plot number two which is oh you'd like me to get you my sister oh I'm sad again um, um, <laughs> well to be that... fair this plot was set up in scene one where mm. um, Fidelio said to old Claremont um, the king is going to let you live because he wants your daughter mm. uh, and we all thought that was what was going to happen yeah so, um but it's just it's sort of the connective tissue through that you know the whole lorenzo plot and how it functioned was sort of very confusing even though it's not actually I, i'm not quite sure how young claremont found out about it there was nothing really there to say that and that's why it was so confusing as to who we thought he was trying to kill and how he was doing whereas in fact he was being relatively noble at that point you know in a sense and but it sounded like he was he was this psychopath um um and it was unclear who he was trying to kill or why um but anyway i feel i feel i'm on on page i i feel i know where i am in the play now i think i feel like i i i think it's i i don't know where it's anything could happen but i i, I now feel i know where we are okay let's go into act four unless anyone has additional thoughts. Uh, okay, Act 4, Scene 1. Enter Francilia and Bellamino. Bye, leave this opportunity, my lord. I shall yield else, and this kiss I shall. Why this, and this, and this thou shalt. Heavens, what a breath is here. Thy father fed on musk and amber when he begot thee, sure. The wanton air chafed by the hot scents of Arabic spices is nothing nigh so sweet. The ambrosia the gods themselves were drunk with dwells on thy lips. Come, you flatter, tis on yours, my lord. <laughs> on mine, alas, nature gave us the prickles. You, you the roses, but that meant that they should grow together. And while they're kissing, uh, a little earlier, enter Florelio, a uh, senior behind. Uh, but anyway, back to kissing. So, so what if the Florio saw you. Well, if they did, I can fear nothing now but surface. Come, we lose time for us, do we not? Kisses her again. This is the minute. By heaven, this is not fair, madam. Wonder strikes me dumb. Exit Francilia. How does she kiss favourite? Who, my lord? My wife, my lord. Draw, <laughs> dr draw. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> draw, draw. All my, all my hopes, my rage will make me turn around. <laughs> Not so easily. They fight. Oh, hold. Oh, let's breathe. Why should I do him right who has done me such wrong and die for her that will live for me? Puts up. Go. Enjoy her. Offers to go out. Soft. Pulls him back. You have stolen a secret here that you must give again or take my life. Draw. But you disturb me not. No, unless you promise never to disclose what you have here discovered. This must be the passage. Uh, stands betwixt the door and Florelio. Huh! I will be mute. Credit me. I will not speak one word. Offers to go out again. Nay. Pulls him back. You must swear it too. If I must, I must. By heaven and by my honour, how tame a thing a cuckold is! Exit Florelio. Death, why should I let him go? We can't no more subsist together than the fire and water. One of us two must die. And Charity tells me, better he than I. But how is it? It is not for my honour to kill him basely, nor is it for hers to kill him otherwise. The whole court will guess the quarrel if it be a duel. Studies again. It is decreed, no matter which way, so he fall. Mine in respect of hers are no respects at all. And exit Bella Mino, and that's the end of the scene. Okay, so Fra was there a mention earlier that Francilia was already married? Um, I gathered she was she was somebody's <laughs> sister and son, but I don't recall a. a, a, a so, I mean, <laughs> We shouldn't laugh for the line, my wife, my lord. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just got a knock corpse at the one who was just like... Because <laughs> he's like, I didn't think she was married. I, I this is this is one of those plays where the plot revelations come rather too quick at some point. <laughs> it's about the, about the blue. I mean, 
you really didn't get the impression that she was married. I mean, maybe it was hinted <laughs> there in the dialogue. We just missed it. But it seems yeah. like a detail you'd have somewhere. Because, yeah. Anyway, I love the fight of him going, I'm not, I'm not going to fight. Well, you know, no, no, that's all well. Um, it's really weird, this play. <laughs> Again, it's very enjoyable. I, I don't know whether it's enjoyable to put in front of an audience uh, once with, with a bit of prep, but it's it's definitely very enjoyable to read in this context. Um, any other thoughts? Um, I think that scene could function perfectly well. I like the whole... Uh, and presumably it's an intergenerational fight as well. So, uh, you know, Florelio is sort of going, hang on, hang on. No, may, maybe fighting you is not a good idea. I'm... I'm, I'm not quite as good as this as I used to be. Um, so there's something quite quite interesting there. Uh, Eric? I feel like a lot of the reveals in this play are very, very quick. <laughs> just, it's kind of like, how does she kiss? Who, oh, my lord? My wife! It's mm. kind of very um, clumsy and unsubtle, but funny. <laughs> and I know it shouldn't be funny, but yeah. I mean, I, 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 what I really liked was the whole little kissing back and forth. I thought that little bit of the scene worked really well. And again, <laughs> the individual components of this play all work quite well. It's just the fact that they're not given any room to breathe by there being some stuff around it. Um, it's all so quick. And so characters just turn up and, and there's no opportunity to figure out who they are. Um, okay. Let's let's go to a completely different universe. Act four, scene two. Enter Doco di Scopio and Drolio. Abused, grossly abused, at base affront. Believe it, Drolio. Why? What's the matter, Signor? Why do you hear nothing? No. Why? What should it be? Pizarro is the man. Fie, fie! It cannot be. The state would not commit so great an oversight. Neglect a man of merit for Pissarro, fie, fie. Want of judgment, Drolio, an unlearned counsel. I ever told you so, never more heads nor never less wit. Believe it. Say you so, senor, that's hard. What say you, Diano? <laughs> Alas, an ordinary brain talks and talks, it's true, but speaks more than he is. Believed betwixt you and I, a mere prattler. There's Falorio, too. Why, he cannot read his own hand. Vasquez cannot speak sense without two days' premeditation. Cilio, Vecchio, Caronio, all stones in their head. If I should tell these lords now, senor, what you say, it might cost an ear or so. I... Why, there's another abuse in the state. A man shall have his ears cut off for speaking a truth. A sick government, Drolio, and a weak one, believe it. It never thrived since Spain and we grew so great. There's a mystery in that too, Drolio. I will know all before they have any more of my money. Peace, Signor the King. Oh. Exuant Ducco di Scopio <laughs> and Drolio enter the King, Queen, Lords, and Ambassador from Spain, who has his audience. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, like I've this should be at the beginning. Yeah. It's like this is this is where where Liza said the two people chatting. It's like this is at the beginning. This frame. Yeah. And also, how do you tell he's an ambassador from Spain? Is he like going to Vera Roche walks on? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, I'll just I'll we'll just just finish the last few lines of this because uh, I'm sure it all make tie it all together uh, after which the king goes out talking with Fidelio the rest follow uh, then enter the two brothers of, uh, enter the two brothers Falerio uh, the elder speaks earnestly I pray thee leave me by all that's good thou canst not know it why shouldst thou thus in vain why shouldst thou thus in vain torment thyself and me they whisper well I guess and it is enough Exit young Florelio. The elder Florelio goes out at another door. Okay, I didn't even realise they were brothers. I, I thought <laughs> it was a father and son combo again, but they're brothers. Okay. Okay. So, we got some courtiers having a conversation. 
some people wander in and out. And I, I think Daco is annoyed because someone else was appointed to the council before him. I think something like that, isn't it? Yeah. Or something. And everyone's idiots. I, it feels to me like that's a bit of um, that this is a bit of some sort of topical satire about someone speaking their mind and getting their ear, uh, uh, you know, being pilloried in some fashion. It, it feels like that's a topical reference. I, I don't know if it is because, you know, I can think of a few instances in the past where uh, where people have, if not said the truth, but said something awkward and, and been, you know, nailed to a to a post. Um, but I can't think of um, a specific in context with this. Um, but that that's that's my feeling of that that's why it's so random uh, unless there's an important plot connection going forward which there might be he said um so florelio and brother florelio come on and say how an, an annoyed he is from the previous scene i think that's basically all he's doing there i had no idea the florelios were brother i thought they might have been father and son yeah that was my that was my but take from earlier. I guess I, it makes more sense for them to be brothers. Yeah, the idea that the elder Florelio is, is is an older man married to to um, Francilia would feel awkward. So that that takes away the potential comedy business of an intergenerational thing that we had in the previous scenes. So that's no longer there because he's not actually uh, an older person per se. He's just older than his brother. Um, okay. And there's the king of Spain, uh, ambassador of Spain. So uh, ambassador of Spain for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, Eric. Uh, I was just thinking that um, Doc and Scorpio just like want someone to talk to and Drolio just happens to be there. I mean, you know, <laughs> m might be his, you know, serving man or whatever, but Drolio has to deal with Discopio's sort of like rants on a daily basis and he's like stop checking your instagram stop checking your facebook feed stop doom scrolling um just sort of yeah he ignores him for most of the, I, I imagine i don't know yeah uh, also what's happened to parmenio random yeah yeah okay so let's continue act four because this is all becoming very very clear um act four scene three Enter young Claremont and Francilia. Think not, good sir. Your elegant enforcements can seduce my weakness. It's a resolution grounded, and sooner shall the fixed orbs be lifted off their hinges than I be moved to any act that bears the name of foul. You know the way you came, sir. Is this all the respect the king shall have? No, you would do well to clothe this harsh denial in better language. You may please to say I owe my life unto my sovereign and would be proud to pay it in at any warning were it ne'er so short. But for my chastity, it doth so much concern another, I can by no means part with it. So fare you well, sir. Exit Francilia. By heaven, a saint, no woman. Sure she was born of the virtues of her mother, not of her vices. The whole sex may, be, may come to be thought well of for her sake. I long to meet Florelio. My joy is not complete till I have cured his jealousies as well as mine. Exit young Claremont. Enter Florelio and a boy. There was a time when snakes and adders had no being, when the poor infant world had no worse reptiles than were the melon and the strawberry. Those were the golden times of innocence. There were no kings then, nor no lustful peers, no smooth faced, no smooth faced favourites, nor no cuckolds. Sure, oh, how happy is that man whose humble thoughts kept him from court, who never yet was taught the glorious way unto damnation, who never did aspire further than the cool shades of quiet rest. How have the heavens his lower wishes blessed? Sleep makes his labours sweet, and innocence does his mean fortunes truly recompense. He feels no hot loves, nor no palsy fears, no fits of filthy lusts or of pale jealousies. He wants it true, our clothes, our masks, our diet, and wants our cares, our fears, and our disquiets. But this is all but raving, and does this temper more? Our sleep lies all along on the ground 
Boy, sing the song, I pray you. A song to a lute. The boy does not have to sing. Hast thou seen the down in the air when wanton blasts have tossed it? Or the ship on the sea when the ruder waves have crossed it? Hast thou marked the crocodile's weeping or the fox's sleep? Or hast thou viewed the, co- the peacock in his pride, or the dove by his bride when he courts for his luxury? Oh, so fickle, oh, so vain, oh, so false, so false is she! Exit boy, enter young Clermont. How now, Florelio, melancholy? No, I was studying. Oh, prithee, resolve me whether it be better to maintain a strong implicit faith that can by no means be oppressed, or falling to the bottom of the first, armed with disdain and with contempt, contempt to scorn the worst. Ah, this is a subtle one, but why studying about this? Oh, faith, I would find a good receipt for the headache, that's all. <laughs> I know now whereabouts you are. No more, aunt. I'm come to clear those doubts. Your wife is chaste, chaste as the turtle dove. <laughs> Why do you laugh? I know she is. Tis not so many hours since I tempted her with all my eloquence and for the king, yet found her cold as ice. Huh, you do not well to tempt a friend. You do forget she is my sister. Would I you You'll give a reason now for this? None. By all that's good since our dear father left us, we are become his scorn. Look you, sir, I dare maintain it. And draws. But I dare not. Put up! Put up, young man, who when thou hast known a woman, thou wilt be tamer. Exit Florelio. What should this mean? I know he's valiant, wise, discreet, and what of that? Passion, when it hath got the bit, doth oft times throw the rider. Yet why should I be peremptory? She may, for aught I know, be yet unchaste with some unworthy groom. Studies. Mm. What if I stole into some corner and heard her at confession? Twould not be amiss, for souls at such a time, like ships in tempests, throw out all they have. Now I think on her trial shall be quick. Friend, I'll do thee right. Come on to what will. She dies if she be light. And exit young Claremont there. Um, I don't think that's how confession works, people. Um, I, th- um, I, I think you're supposed, they're supposed to be quite private things. And... I think uh, he might be taking the wrong side. Like, surely even if his sister is cheating, she's still his sister and he Mm. should probably not murder her or just maybe not get involved. Maybe he should mind his own business. Um, yeah, these these are radical thoughts that you're having for 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 a play like this. Um, I entirely agree, of course. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's another example of of these these men constantly obsessing about sisters daughters uh lives in this way and uh yeah we, we we keep coming across this we have a song to a lute by a boy um we we do we do beautifully rendered by eric and it's a straight out parody of have you seen but a white lily grow ben johnson's song from the devil is an ass mm. uh it, it, if if it indeed Def- I th- yes, it should post date it, shouldn't it? Yes, um, that's presumably part of the dating range. Um, the, the the logic comes to that. Yes. Uh, sadly, we uh, well presumably we can infer music for it. Then um, uh, I know the next song we do actually have the musical uh, the, the 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 setting for it. So, uh, but not for this one, uh, as far as I know. Um, other thoughts. Um, it's, it, I, I do quite. There is a nice dramatic irony, I suppose, of young Claremont turning up and going, "Oh, oh, it's, I know, it's fine. I know she's she, my 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 sister is perfectly chaste. I, I I had a conversation with her. Therefore, I know everything is true." And of course, we saw the scene earlier, and and we know Florelio isn't very happy. Um, is it, it, is Florelio then the sad one? 
because he's quite sad now. I, I don't know if Cl Claremont's actually ever been sad. I mean, he's been grieving, he's been angry, he's been revengeful. Is he sad? Or is it Claremont uh, who's sad? Eric? I, I'm wondering if they're playing pasta potato or something, you know, like you know, like hot potato where someone has to have the sad and then they pass it on to the next person. Mm. Um I, I don't passing, know. They're probably passing it around along with the idiot ball because there's a <laughs> certain amount of passing of that about going on in this play. Um, okay. Um, uh, I'm sure the sexual politics are going to get more, 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 more progressive as the play goes on. I'm sure that's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. Act four, scene four. Enter Signor Morticani, the poet, and two of the actors... Well, if there be no remedy, one we'll must act two parts. Roselio shall be the fool and the lord, and Tiso the citizen and the cuckold. That cannot be, Signor. You know, one still comes in while the other goes out. Yeah, by Jove, tis true. Let me see, and we'll contrive it. The lord and the usurer, the citizen and the politician, and sure, they are never together. But who shall act the honest lawyer? Tis a hard part, that. And the tedious one. I, I, it's admired that you would put it in, Squire, and it is against your own rules to represent anything on the stage that cannot be. <laughs> well, I just think it is possible for a lawyer to be honest. <laughs> As it is for a Lord Treasurer to be poor, or for a king not, not to be cousined. There's little Robin in debt within these three years, grown fat and full by the trade. And then there's Boracchio, an unknown man, got it all by speaking loud and bawling. Believe it, sir, they have no more conscience than an innkeeper. I grant you all this. An old cook and a good will please all palates. There is that for the young tapers of the law. Then there's a bawdy jest or two extraordinary for the ladies. And when it comes to be acted in private, I'll have a jerk at the stake for the country gentlemen. Um, I, I, I think we might have lost Multicani there. Um, we we, we, we apologise for any technical problems that are currently occurring in the, the scene. Um, if it does not take my masters, it lies not upon me. I have provided well. And if the stomach of the times be naught, the fault's not in the meat or in the cook. Come, let's find out Lepido and dine at the mermaid. Come, let us have one rouse, my loves, in Aristippus. We shall conceive the better afterwards. Agreed. Agreed, agreed. All together now. <laughs> uh, you take the first line, Eric. Come, come away to the tavern, I say. For now at home is washing day. Leave your prittle prattle, let's have a pottle. We are not so wise as Aristotle, but a bunch. Ex Exuant actors singing. Um, no. Again, uh, this feels very integral to the plot. Um, and <laughs> it's, it's quite a nice scene. <laughs> I, I, and, and as was put in the chat, um, this it, it's very much the problem I have every week when I'm trying to figure out how to make the doubling work when you don't quite have enough actors in the room. It's just uh, someone's got to... This person's coming out when this person's coming in. So how how's that going to... They can't play that character. There's no... And the logic of doubling when you've actually clearly only got two actors or, uh, or three actors, I suppose, if you're including Multicarne. But uh, two actors, you, yeah. How do, you, how do you... One's got to go off and change while the other one's left on stage. Um it, it, it's, it's, it's a doubling problem we've noticed with plays of a small, uh, small cast. Uh, Eric? Oh, no, no, Eric. Sorry, Greg. Sorry. <laughs> we both wear glasses. We get it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Eric. You know, interchangeable, obviously, by now. Um, have we had a mention of actors coming in? <laughs> There's a because it's just was feels... mentioned once. <laughs> right. It's so memorable. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> it's just like who the hell are these? It's like disco, disco Dan. Further up, it's like you just think who. <laughs> Yeah, and it's um, it and it's not like what they're describing is a mask either. It doesn't seem very mask-like, so it doesn't seem that it's connected with that. Um, we just keep having these interspersed, interspersed scenes between plot where we get something's happening that's tangential and not wholly out of the universe of the play, but not quite integrated into everything else. Eric. It's making me think a bit of Mamma Mia, like the film. 
<laughs> you got like all this random like people turning up you've got random storylines here and there and then it probably will culminate in something really bad at the end <laughs> or, or like a dance i don't know at the end well it i mean structurally uh, a lot of these scenes these slightly random scenes are in between plot scenes so uh, the next scene coming up is long young claremont and florelio so you need something to go in between and so maybe this is just it, it, it it's like in much earlier plays when you've got a random speech from a clown who comes on does some business in between two important plot scenes and it's just simply to keep the scenes separated so maybe that's part of the logic here i suspect it may have something to do with the mask and it's just not been fully articulated um but i could be wrong it could just be a random scene with some clowns uh okay uh act four scene five <laughs> Enter young Claremont and Florelio's senior brother. By heaven, she's false. False as the tears of crocodiles or what is yet more famed, I do confess. Your pardon, Florelio, come, pray your pardon. Perchance I may deserve it. You have it, so has she. Would heaven would do it as easily as I. Heaven cannot do so foul an act. She is, she has done too much. And should not I see justice done, the gods would punish me. Brother, clear up. The world shall not be one day elder ere I see thy injuries revenged. This night the king will revel and be gamesome. He will change beds with thee. Deny him not and leave the rest to me. Thy youth, I see, doth put thee on too fast. Thou hast too much of passion, gentle brother. Thinks thou the death of a poor lustful king or peer can give me ease? No, for if it could, my hand does go as far as that way is thine. Had she been chased, there had been no tempters been. There had no tempters been, or if there had, I had not thought it sin. Draw not thy sword at all. I do beseech thee. Draw not deserve one drop of noble blood. Forget it. Do for my sake. May heaven forget me then. Where is the courage of thy house become? When didst thou cease to be thyself? Shall two brave families be wronged, most basely wronged? And shall we tamely like philosophers dispute it without reasons? First, may I live the scorn of all the world, then die forgotten. No, no, were there as many actors in thy wrong as does the vast stage of the world now bear? Not one should scape my rage. I and my ghost would persecute them all. By all our ties of love, of brother, friend, by what thou holdst most dear, I do conjure thee to leave this work to me. And if thou e'er canst think that I present thee not a full revenge, then take it out on me. Thy zeal have overcome me. What wouldst thou have me do? Nothing but this. Obey the king in all he shall desire, and let your servants be at my dispose this night. One of your faithfulest confidants send hither presently. Well, I shall. But what you'll do, heaven knows. I know not, nor will I. It is enough that I, against my will, am made a passive instrument of ill. Farewell. Exit Florelio. So, there is but this. The wanton king this night thinks to embrace my sister. His bed shall prove his grave. His own favourite shall make it so. I have persuaded him she yields, and this night doth expect him. He, to make sure of the husband, by my advice, as if he did intend some jest, means to change lodgings with wronged Florelio, the favourite. Enter Petruccio. Petruccio, welcome. You have other clothes. Uh, uh, these should I borrow for a little while. <laughs> In masking times, disguises are in fashion. I have a pretty plot in hand, and if it take, twill be some crowns in my way. I shall pray hard it may, sir. My clothes, howsoever, are at your service. Oh, and I at yours, Petruchio. But you must be dumb and secret now. As any statue, sir. Ah, come then, let us about it. And they... Exuant. So, in between scenes, uh, uh, young Claremont has has um, um, listened in on confession, presumably. I mean, <laughs> See, why couldn't Suckling have written that instead of had some randos discussing? Any, any... Well, I mean, you, you yes, but you, then you would need two random scenes 
in between to fit in the gaps between young Claremont coming on and, and, and things. So there, there is a lot. It would be an interesting scene to contrive because then you could have a comedy vicar and uh, you could uh, you could do all sorts of things with that. Um, yeah, there's some um, no no reason for the actors as of yet is really emerging here, is it? Um, but yes, we have a plot. We have costume changes. Um, yeah. We've got stuff going down. Stuff going down. Uh, any other thoughts? Before we dive into Act 5, which will be illuminating, I am sure, Eric. Um, yeah, I, I was going to... I can't remember what I was going to say now. I got distracted by the shiny things. Um, no, it's interesting how he goes in masking times this guy's are in fashion. It's like he's basically flagging up the fact, in case you haven't noticed, I'm going to disguise myself because like for, for this purpose but then kind of like i'm assuming it's basically like you 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 suggested earlier where you have um like breaks between acts otherwise you wouldn't really need to remind the audience of people doing that mm. like that that claremont is going to disguise himself as someone else to sort of fit in mm. Uh, other thoughts? We're all struggling, I can tell. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's dive into Act 5, where all will be... Uh, all the loose ends will come together, I, uh, I promise you. Act 5, Scene 1. Enter Lepido and Drolio. A dare mask, no doubt you contrived it. Uh, Mary, he says, he that says it's good, our sir, he's made it. Signor Multicarni. Who? The poet Laureus? Uh, the same. Oh, then, to a blasphemy to speak against it. What? Are we full of cupids? Do we sail upon the vast and resail and fetch the mask from the clouds? Away, critic, thou never understood him. Troth, I confess it. But my comfort is others are troubled with the same disease. Tis epidemical. The P. Likaido, <laughs> take on, take on me words and let's in and see how things go forward. And they exit. So it is connected to the plot. It was connected to the mask. It is or it all makes sense. Um, it's all perfectly reasonable. Um, it does seem to be that this is doing a bit of um, art mask stupid um, uh, <laughs> uh, discourse, isn't it? It feels like it could be a, a, a bit of a, a poke. At, uh, again, it could be a bit of satire there. It's uh, the poet laureate feels that could be a dig um that and uh, and things i do love the you know uh, what are we full of cupids because <laughs> <laughs> that's what they all they're, that's what all masks are there's a load of cupids and you know vast things clouds stuff happens with clouds uh, i like the idea that multicarni is m just misunderstood you know he's he's he's, he's a poet because he's misunderstood mm, yes that's how, that's 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 the only reason people become poets is so they can be misunderstood. And, and Drolio retorts that, yes, no one understands this guy. It's impossible to understand him. <laughs> and and combine that with the joke we had in the actors scene where they all talk, where they were all like, "Oh, let's all go to the mermaid." It has to be one of the set of playwrights who were drinking at the mermaid. Mm, yes, well, I mean, it has to be said. I'm 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 feeling very Johnsony but vibes. Uh, several times in this text actually so um i i think that's probably where the digs may be coming into um uh though again where precisely you date this might make a difference as to that um it's got a reasonable dating range okay anyway we have more to act five uh act five scene two enter francilia alone weeping well, all my griefs and all your gentle tears drop still and never cease to fall till you become a boundless ocean, then drown the source that sent me out and hide Francilia from her husband's sight, her wronged husband's. Oh, could my Florelio but see how all hot flames within me are gone forth. Sure he would love me again, yet sure he would not. Heavens, how just you are and oh, how wicked I am. My heart beats thick as if my end were nigh, and would it were. 
a better time death cannot take. An absolution I have had and have confessed my unchaste love unto my ghostly father. My peace is made above, but here below. Oh, what makes thou here, Petruchio? Enter young Claremont, like to Petruchio. She weeps, the whore repents, perchance. Uh, madam, it is my master's pleasure that this night you keep your chamber. Thy voice and countenance are not the same. They tell me that my master is displeased. Uh, madam, it may be so, but that to me is as unknown as is the newfound world. I am his servant and obey commands. And so am I. I prithee tell him so. I will not stir. Exit Francilia. <sighs> How cunning is the devil in a woman's shape. He had almost again persuaded me to have become her brother. Enter servant. Petruchio, the favourite is lighted at the door and asked to see my lady. Uh, my lady is retired. W where is he? Uh, exit servant. This to my heart's desire falls out. Enter Bellamino, the favourite. Where is Francilia? Uh, my lord, she is not well and craves your lordship's pardon. What, sick upon a mask night, and when the king sends for her? Come, come, that must not be. Which way is she? Claremont steps to him and whispers. He starts. By heaven. By heaven. Nor will she ever see you more if he... I understand you. I'm Belmino. If ere he see the morning, I had decreed it. Nor should he have survived three days had he ne'er been so silent. Uh, this night's his last, Petrugio. This arm will make it so. I will not trust my brother with the act. Nobly resolved. But how or where, my lord? No matter where, rather than fail, I'll make the presence chamber be the place of execution. Still nobly. But, my lord... Uh, but again, Petrugio? Oh, uh... And again, my lord, no, no, my lady loves you well, but, but loves her honour too. And there are ways, I hope, to keep the one and yet not lose the other. Do I not know my lady lies alone and will feign herself sick this night and all on purpose too? Am I not, am not I, to let you into her chamber and to give out the fact once done that he killed himself? And, and there is all we have. Yes, there <laughs> is no ending. For you, Mr. Oh, no. um, there is no ending to the play. Uh, the ending is missing. Um, and I mean, there are whole questions about the composition of this text, it, it, uh, of which I say I, I don't know very much about the background. Um, uh, but it's it, it. I mean, it says it's a tragedy. Technically, they could all live happily ever after. We could decide that everybody else lives from this point onwards and all the other previous people come back. Um, but presumably something involving a mask and or a bed scene with people confused as to who they are and then everybody gets stabbed. Um, I'm assuming, broadly speaking, that's how it how it ends. Um, but I think there's a really big question about actually how finished the rest of the play is. It feels like this is the first draft where someone's hacking out the shape, he's writing out his favourite scenes but it's not really complete um you know it's not just that we don't have the ending it's just we don't really have a fully formed play uh which is an opportunity not a burden because it does feel to me that this is this is something that actually could be expanded upon or played around with or i mean i talked about it earlier or feeling almost like a film script i think you could you could actually almost work it as a film script in the sense that you could do so much with it visually to fill in some of those gaps um and and you wouldn't need to cut it down because it's probably in terms of the amount of dialogue spoken it's probably about the right length for a film script actually already um it's, it probably needs a little trimming back um but you know all those sort of dumb shows and montages you can do to fill in all of those those bits of court intrigue to explain what's going on um or say just hand it to someone else to write some more material and use this as a starting point for a new play because it it feels it, it, there's some good stuff in here, but it's not really complete. Um, I mean, beyond the obvious that it doesn't have an ending. Um, any 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 potential endings? Anyone feels that they want? How do how do you want it to end? Um, any questions, thoughts about this final scene? Um, 
It's difficult to like young Claremont. And that's not just because, you know, sexual politics have, have advanced. Um, it's just he's not actually very likeable, um, just generally. I mean, he's just very angry. Um, I'm riffing now. I'm waiting for someone to wave and uh, express an opinion. Um, please save me. Desna, thank you. <laughs> so, I mean, I just have a lot of questions, really. And I'm still confused about, about why old Claremont was... Um locked up in the first place. What has happened to Fidelio, who was going to be lo loyal to old Claremont, but then threw his lot in with the king? Um, and uh, and, and uh, in terms of the ending, I'd like to say, I'd like to see kind of Francelia wiping them all out and ruling on her own. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I can go with that. Um... Uh, uh, Matthew. It's not so much about the ending, but just when you said earlier about an, how absurd it is, I just felt like it was like Alfred Jerry. It was like puppeteers coming on. Ding, 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 ding. A ping pong ball machine. And, you know, if it was to give it a name, it'd have to be like carry on suckling. There is, you know, it, we, we, we all go up to the pier and have a great party. And I, I, I do like the genesis of those ideas about the play within a play and we're getting terribly meta, but we've got a lot of disease in here. And my God, what was going on with crocodiles at that time period? There's a lot of crocodiles. There's a lot of slate skin opportunities for costume here, but just, you know, the reptilian nature of it, they could all, you know, go off to space and get eaten by a snake. You know, we could, we could take it into <laughs> a Rocky horror show. Cause that seems where we're going. Um, bring it on. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it, and it is. It, I mean, when you've got a script that that is basically all of the plot beats, but none of the the rest of it, it sort of highlights how absurd all these plays really are. You know, it, you mm. need actually to have well defined characters who are doing interesting things. Otherwise, just you're taken out of it and just go, "What is this nonsense?" <laughs> Which you know, any drama that happens with any drama. I mean, modern drama today mm. with you know. How many police procedurals do we watch where they've become increasingly over the top and ridiculous and by the end you're sitting there going, no, they would have called for backup. They wouldn't have gone in there. They would, none of that would have happened. No, that, 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 that's not a thing. Um, but if it's well done, you, you kind of let it go. Um, I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling this is this is the the darker counterpoint to the Fair Maid of Bristow, which, again, had exactly the same problem. What was more resolutely a comedy. I seem to recall. I could be wrong. <laughs> we just found it very funny. Um, but um, I fairly said it was comedy. Uh, sorry, Greg, you've been waving for ages. No, I just, I, I, I put it in the chat. It, it feels almost like um, a play like Blank or um, a similar one where you just get a load of scenes and the direct and the writer just says, look, just pick which ones you want. <laughs> just pick pick anything. You, you don't have to do them all. Do you? Yeah, I I feel sorry for old Caramot and Fidelia. It, almost like characters from another play. Mm. <laughs> it's just like I, I feel like is there a the sad one part one or the happy one? Suddenly, <laughs> 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 this is like the sequel. Um, no, uh, it has been great fun. Don't get me wrong. Um, I like a good giggle, but who's you know we said we were we we normally do corpsing via the chat we've managed it without even needing a chat <laughs> well yeah i mean it's because but it is frustrating because it, it, it went, there, there's a good turn of phrase the dialogue actually functions quite well a lot of the time there's there's some good stuff in here it's just it's just just not pulled together um i said we're effectively into final thoughts i will sort of orbit round and see what any any additional final thoughts if you've already said them that's fine liza do you have any final thoughts about this one i i, I say I, i'm seeing this as an exercise as something to 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 turn into a thing it's obviously not really in a fit state to really just present as is although i probably at some point will because i'm i'm like that <laughs> um well i just i have to say as confusing as this play is, I wish it were completed because I want to see whether he could stick the landing. Mm. Like whether he could bring all the disparate people together and make an ending that makes sense. Um, signs point to no, but I would have liked to see him try. Mm. Um, and to your point about young Claremont not being terribly likable, I don't know. I think the most likable thing about him is that he's constantly being kind of dumbfounded by events. 
and he and he tries his best to think of the right thing to do and he always defaults to stabbing someone um so you know in in the confusion uh lies the commonality i think mm. uh tom any final thoughts just to echo the fact that um i think it's something you can hang your coat on um and i love the accents i love the accent matthew you went there uh, that was great. Obviously, you can't talk like that in London, or we wouldn't get employed. <laughs> oh, it sounds like the sounds like the Wirral. That's wrong, call, love. Wrong, call. Oh, right. sweet. Um, yeah. No, I think you can. You can. A writer could. Uh, yeah. It's a. But ex again, if it's the first time we've heard this writer, why did we expect anything more? I think that's what the readings do. They show us. All sorts of strange things, really. Mm. Uh, Greg, any more to add, or did you cover it all earlier? Um, I'm curious to see what else he wrote. My other question was, what, what was the source material for the text? Was it a printed version, or was it some sort of oddly handwritten something or other? Um, I am fairly certain it got published posthumously a lot, uh, in some fashion, I think. Uh, or, or as, 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 yeah, included in the last remains of Sir John Suckling. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds like a great title for the show when we eventually do anything uh, with this part. <laughs> I don't know whether it's all of it or whether that's... The, the the songs in this get reprinted an awful lot and bits and pieces get re reprinted a lot but i think that's where uh the uh where the actual so potentially uh, we lost the ending before it got into the print then yeah i th i think the 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 introductory note that we didn't read out um covers some of that as well so i uh, think but he definitely wrote uh, more stuff and there's uh, there's a reasonable am amount of thing to get a sense of who he is this is in a sense an unfair starting point on our journey but i had an evening uh, a single evening session that i wanted to to do something with and it was short so thus it won um uh, eric any final thoughts i was too busy laughing I, I know it was meant to be a tragedy but it's just yeah i i feel it's one of those where i want to revisit it just to see how it can work uh even with this lack of an ending or maybe like i don't know just like lights out kind of thing um just like leave it open to people like choose your own adventure or no um ask the yeah. audience yeah but also i'm really kind of disappointed that there, there isn't a complete thing here because i want to know what happens next man yeah mm. uh desna any final thoughts nope you uh matthew any anything additional to add uh yeah just from that line in Act two, where it says the secrets of the prince, just really inspired. What am I, what am I left with? That's an inspiration to go forward. When we've been talking about the giggles with the WhatsApps uh, of, or the, the Twitters or Instagrams and blushing cherries, thank you for this tonight. But if we were to drop this play behind the gates of number 10 or Buckingham Palace with everything that's happened today, it, it fits like a glove. Mm. It wouldn't be that odd perversely as that sounds mm. yes i mean the the yes the absurdity of, of 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 the things that are happening behind behind closed doors um and for context uh that that was a, a instance occurring approximately 10 to 12 months uh, ago uh on the release schedule for this video um <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't think it was. Think, think, think the, the, the WhatsApp uh, uh, releases uh, to. No, the... none, of, none of us really think about time. Uh, yeah, it's, no. Uh, but, but, you're, but yeah, it would be fun to, to do this as a, kind of, as a kind of, you know, mask of conscience in front of the powerful. Mm. But there, there, there's, the, there's your journalists, there's, there's the newsroom, there's the number 10, there's, there's the royals, there's in America, and then. Uh, the plays and then the Oscars and then and even the kind of censorship or the, the how would you how would you have to edit this in the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory way mm -hmm. you know we giggled about the gender stuff we giggled about you know we don't really like you and the devil and sex and those beautiful references to women beware women and then that Johnston vibe 
And then even the sand madness of time going backwards. It, there's, you know, we're going meta, 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 meta. But just, it is fun. It's a bit of a voyage. It, it's like an old 1950s. It's creaky, but I mean, give it some CGI and a bit of Stranger Things and you're off. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I, again, I, I very much like the idea of it as a film script, and that might fit that aesthetic really well as well uh, as an as an as an option. Set set it modern day. Set it set it set it in a in a, in a filmed universe. Um, and that would that would make it on a budgetary level actually achievable as well. Um, so original costuming would perhaps be more. Um, uh, everyone, everyone, bring your best suits. There you are. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there. Uh, anyway, uh, we have uh, run uh, pretty much out of time. Unless anyone has anything additional they want to throw in, I will close the session. All that fa remains, thank all the wonderful readers for all their wonderful reading. Thank you very much, everyone, and goodbye. I'll have a jerk.